Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Josephine and on this channel we talk about all things fragranced. Today's video is a tag video which is long overdue. It is a 3 for 3 tag. I was tagged by Rose and Jones and Kali Reviews. I'll link their channels down below. And essentially this tag is a really fun tag because I will be sharing with you my 3 favorite notes in perfumery and 3 favorite fragrances that incorporate these notes. So if you're interested in knowing what these are, then please keep watching. All right, so the first note that I'm obsessed with is Ambroxan slash Ambergris. For those of you who follow me on YouTube for a while, this is not really any new news and, you know, frankly, it might be a bit boring at this point and I might be sounding like a broken record, but this tag is a great opportunity to talk about it again. And the first fragrance I have under the Ambroxan note is, what do you know, Molecule 2 by Eccentric Molecule. I love this scent because this perfume is Ambroxan in a bottle. So now, what does Ambroxan smell like? Ambroxan is a very fresh, aquatic, mineral note that has woody and ambery undertones. It is present in a lot of men's fragrances and some women's as well, and it helps make your fragrance last longer too. So it is a great perfume that you can layer with. And it's actually really easy to layer with because it is a very linear fragrance. This fragrance is really very Versatile. You can wear it any time of the day. You can wear it on the weekends if you want to have a bit more of a relaxed vibe. You can wear it during the week at the office. This is a great office scent. Or add an interesting mineral facet. So I love this scent and it's such a great investment because it's just really useful to have in your perfume collection. So yeah, this is Molecule 2 by Eccentric Molecules. I love, love, love this and I recommend that you definitely test this fragrance out. The second fragrance that I adore that has a note of ambergris in it. It is Becca Rouge 540. This perfume for the longest time, I just didn't want to hear about it. I was like, no, everyone's wearing it. A bit of a snob that way sometimes but you know what now I own it and it is a great fragrance I did a full review on this perfume and its dupes as well I'll link it down below if you're interested in seeing what it's all about Taca Rouge 540 by Maison Francis Curgeon has notes of jasmine cedarwood saffron and ambergris and ambergris is such a gorgeous ingredient so ambergris for those of you who don't know is actually coming from the digestive juices of whales which just doesn't sound so appealing like this, but actually it is a gorgeous ingredient and the way that it's collected is that it actually floats on the surface of the ocean. Basically the whale produces digestive secretions and that will induce them to vomit their food. They vomit and the secretions will separate from the vomit and that secretion that floats on the surface of the water is ambergris. It washes up onto the beach and it forms this sort of like a solid gray mass that is actually very valuable. This is a really expensive ingredient and it's just so wonderful. Actually, fun fact, Marie Antoinette used to put it in her hot chocolate back in the day because apparently natural ambergris has aphrodisiac properties. So yeah, th that was a little story time on ambergris. Back to the fragrance, Becca Rouge 540. It's very difficult to explain this fragrance because it's very light but dense at the same time. To me, this reminds me of the hard surface of sugar that coats candy apples. So it has that sweetness to it but it's also so quite musky and it leaves an incredible trail behind you and will get you a ton of compliments. This is a great fragrance to have in your wardrobe, especially if you're more into sweeter fragrances and it's actually a great fragrance to enter the niche category as well. So that was Baccarat Rouge 540 Eau de Parfum by Maison Francis Curgeon. And the third fragrance in the Ambroxan slash Ambergris category is one that isn't so obvious because it doesn't specify that it has Ambroxan in the notes, but I I can definitely smell Ambroxan. It is called Vodka on the Rocks by Killian. This is a fresh and clean scent. It has notes of coriander, cardamom, aldehyde, rhubarb, rose, lily of the valley, oak moss, and sandalwood. Let me tell you what this fragrance reminds me of or where it brings me to. This fragrance brings me to La Côte d'Azur or the French Riviera and you're on a massive yacht and then you see a guy wearing a white shirt with really elegant shorts and moccasins and he has 
has a glass of vodka with ice cubes in his hand. That is what this perfume makes me think of. It is more of a masculine scent, even though there's some floral elements. I definitely pick out quite a bit of the Lily of the Valley in here, but it's done in a very masculine way. As it dries down, I get a lot of oak moss, but I get a ton of Ambroxan, which I love, I love so much. The Ambroxan just brings this perfume, I feel, to a whole new level. It's very sexy and adds that freshness to it. And I feel that the Ambroxan, which can be a bit salty, complements the coriander in here very well and gives it that fresh vodka feel, which is very unique to this fragrance. That was Vodka on the Rocks by Killian. My second favorite note at the moment in fragrances is almond. And so the first fragrance that is amazing. It is Tardis by Carner. And some of you who have purchased Tardis really enjoyed it as well. So you'll probably connect when I say how great this fragrance is. So this fragrance has notes of heliotrope, almond, rose, cedarwood, musk, and tonka bean. It is sexy, but it's also comforting. It's quite sensual and balmy. And I've stated previously that this perfume reminds me of the scent of plastic dolls. So that powdery, light, floral sort of sweet scent that is very comforting but smells very nice at the same time this doesn't smell synthetic please don't think it smells synthetic quite the contrary this is a gorgeous fragrance this perfume in my opinion takes all of the right boxes so that was Tardis by Carner the second fragrance within the almondy note family that I absolutely adore is Pegasus by Parfum de Mali it is more of a masculine almondy note actually this fragrance interestingly is listed as a fougère, which I don't get a fougère feel from this at all actually, quite the contrary. This is not really aromatic, it's not really massively fresh either. It's quite creamy and milky and ultra smooth and enveloping, that's what I get from this fragrance rather than a fougère. It's also a little bit floral, I get some heliotrope in here, so it adds that powdery touch and what people have been saying about this fragrance is that it has sort of a metallic feel. I wonder if this is coming from the bottle itself because because it's metallic, but to me, I don't get much of a metallic feel. However, I do get a sort of crisp, musky sharpness, kind of like a knife that's cutting through all these ingredients that gives that sharpness, which perhaps is that metallic feel that people can get from this perfume. But that sharpness really is beautiful. It doesn't feel out of place. It just adds that extra kick to the fragrance. To me, this fragrance is quite comforting and it has an insane longevity. However, it does stay closer to your skin so the projection isn't crazy and has more of an intimate feel, which I love very much. So that was Pegasus by Parfum de Mani. The third fragrance is Peau de Pierre by Stark. So Stark has a line of fragrances that are very unique and my favorite favorite of the range is Peau de Pierre. The almond in here is sort of more in the background in a supporting role rather than being front and center. This fragrance is very fresh. It's super sexy, like really, really sexy. This would smell very good on a man. I am personally gonna get it for myself, but I think this would smell super, super nice on a man. And it, this freshness kind of has a bit of a soapy feel, so this cleanliness. I'm just thinking maybe there's aromatic notes of targon, possibly. So this is a gorgeous, clean almondy scent and really one to discover. So that was Peau de Pierre by Stark. And the third and final note that I really enjoy wearing in fragrance right now is sandalwood. This is such an interesting ingredient. It really brings, in my opinion, so much elegance to a fragrance. And actually, when I was in perfumery school and I would smell sandalwood, for some reason, it's gonna sound really weird, but it reminded me of salted bacon. I don't know why, but that's how I would identify it. Back in the day, now I don't get that salty bacon feel. I don't even know where this came from. Now I get is something that is super creamy and velvety and just really enveloping. If one day I was to create a fragrance, I would definitely include sandalwood in there. So the first scent that I absolutely adore when it comes to sandalwood is Santal Basmati by Affinescence. I've talked about this fragrance quite a lot on my channel already. It is such a gorgeous sandalwood scent and incredibly unique. This is a more of a yummy sandalwood because it has a cooked rice note in here. It kind of gives it a sort of a vanilla rice pudding effect, but it's super creamy, really rich. It's very elegant and one that I would wear on special occasions. So for example, I wore this scent for Christmas 
Christmas. It has that luxury and really sophisticated feel. So if you're into yummy sandalwood scents that smell very unique and different, then I would definitely try out Santal Basmati by Affinescence. The second sandalwood scent that I have is Dame Dao by Diptyque. This fragrance is part of my top five favorite fragrances for men. I will put it on the screen and also link it down below. It is a easygoing sandalwood. So it's not too complicated, but it smells very good. This perfume isn't a gourmand sandalwood, which I tend to really enjoy the gourmand sandalwoods. This is more of a true woody, earthy sandalwood. It has notes of sandalwood, myrtle, and cypress, and it is just a lovely masculine sandalwood scent, in my opinion. And when you first spray it, you get a bit of smokiness from the perfume, but then it dries down and just blends with your skin. It becomes one with your skin. It stays closer to your skin. It's a more of an intimate scent, but it's definitely one that is easily worn. You can, it's a great daytime scent. Ultimately, if you really enjoy sandalwood, I think this could be a great signature scent as well. So that was Tam Dao by Dittik. And finally, the last fragrance that I'll be sharing with you today is a new discovery that I did when I was in Jovoy with Chris from Fragmental and Clemence from Clemence CC Fragrance. We filmed a video on the best sandalwoods at Jovoy and this fragrance was part of it. It is Piano Santal by L'Orchestre Parfum. This fragrance is insane. This is another yummy edible sandalwood scent but it's very sensual and probably a fragrance that you would wear more during the nighttime and perhaps even on date night because it has that edible feel which is just too delicious to resist. The notes in here are sandalwood, cedarwood, and Roxanne, hello! <laughs> this takes all the boxes! As well as milk, cumin, cashmere, and white musk. And what I get from this perfume is a hot milk note, which smells really nice. It's not done in a sickly way. It's not too overpowering. This fragrance is really smooth. It's very creamy and very addictive. If you're into gourmand fragrances, then you'll probably enjoy Piano Santal by L'Orchestre Parfum. I think this is a great scent and it's for sure on my purchase list for 2020. So that was it for my three favorite notes of the moment in perfumery. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you very soon. Bye!